All right, welcome back everyone. So today we're gonna finish out our application. This is what we have so far. We're able to query the SpaceX API to get a launch of any kind, which is all of this. And then we also created a user object that we could log in with. Now today we're gonna actually make this more of an application where these two entities actually talk to each other. And I already copied and pasted the query. So what we wanna do is make two different mutations book trips and cancel trips so that a user could hold on to a set of launches, which is basically the idea of the app where you uh, book a trip to the moon or something. Now we're gonna fix this since both of these are mutations. I'm gonna just put them all together and I'm putting in the user GraphQL schema because that's where we want these trips to actually live. Now the first thing that we're gonna need to do is add a trips attribute to the user object or the user entity, I mean. So we're gonna go open up our entity here and create a column called trips. Now I actually don't wanna make a new entity, so what we're gonna do instead is create an array, which is something you can do in Postgres. And I know that the, the trip IDs are all numbers, so this is gonna be of type int. We're also gonna tell Typeform to treat this field as an array. To do that, we need to set the array is true here and the next thing that we're going to want to do is go into our launch service and we're going to make a new method here so that we can get launches by multiple IDs. And then we're going to want to do the observable equivalent of doing a promise.all, which to translate, that will be a fork join. And we're going to map that array of numbers and pass it through to the original get launch by ID. Now fork join returns multiple observables. So we're gonna have to actually merge them all into one singular observable. And to do that, we're gonna pass the pipe property and use a method called merge map. And the incoming set of observables, we're gonna return as a singular observable using the of method. And be sure to import all of these, which if you don't know, comes from RxJS operators. And we're gonna do a little bit of optimization here. Instead of just returning this all the time, we only want to do it when the array of numbers actually is more than one. Otherwise, it would be wasteful to just do an HTTP request when there's nothing to do. So instead, we'll return an observable of an empty array if we get an empty array. Now, the reason why we're updating the launch service is because we were going to want to use the launch service in our user module. And to do that, I'm going to go to the launch module and make sure that we export this launch service so that we can import the launch module in our user module. And inside of our user module, we will do that. So this will be launch module. Uh, launch module has a dependency on the HTTP module, so we should probably get that too. So I'm going to add that to our imports array. And once that's done, we can get, go into our user resolver and inject that dependency. And that's the launch service of type launch service. Now we can use that launch service here to resolve the field of trips. And we know we need to return get launches by IDs, but we need to get the user.trips. And this field is being resolved on the me query. And if you remember, this user comes from the JWT payload inside of our context. So rather than just returning what's inside of our context, because the trip attribute may change over time, and it's not gonna stay inside of the token. It would be a better idea to get the actual user entity from the context that, it's, that we're given. So I'm gonna use the user service to get that user from email. And now inside of our resolve field, we'll have access to the parent object, which is of type user entity. And then inside of get launched by IDs, we can just pass in the user dot, dot ships. All right, Mr. So I mistakenly made trips a string array. This is actually supposed to be a number array. So we'll do number here instead. And that should fix our little typo. And with that, we have everything that we need to be able to read all the trips that we create. However, we still need to actually add them to the user entity. And that's where we're gonna add these two mutations to our user resolver. So I'm gonna scroll down and make these stubs here. The actual business logic is actually gonna live inside of our user service. So that's the next file that we're gonna open up. And we're gonna close all these tabs because there's a lot. So in our user service, I'm gonna create two new methods, one called add trips 
and the other one called remove trips. And this is where we're going to do some CRUD operations. And let's get started with the add trips first. So this is going to be a little bit more complex. So we're going to deal with promises. So I'm going to make this an async function. And we know we need to get the user by email. So I'm going to add another argument here for the email that we can pass into Typeform to grab the user. And here I'm going to just reassign user.trips where we can cap the IDs that are being sent in. Now just for some safety so that we don't get duplicate IDs, I'm going to use this syntax to create a set and then remove all the duplicates. And then we'll save the user. Remove trips can be similar. We're still going to need to grab the user. So I'm going to send in the email as well. However, this time we're going to reassign the user.trips and filter out the ID that's coming in. And then finally, we'll need to save this as well. Now, so far, both of these functions are void. They're not returning anything. And we're going to go look into our GraphQL schema and see what we actually want to return. And it's going to be this trip update response type. Except in our service, we don't actually have uh, the launches. So what we're going to do instead is create a new user model. So I'm going to make a new file called, uh, let me clear this so you can actually see what I'm going to do. So the file is going to be called user.models.ts. And this file is going to hold all the intermediate data structures. So we're going to create a trip update response model. And we're going to use the omit advanced type here so that we have trip update response, but we're going to replace the launches property because we're going to return an array of numbers instead. And then back in our schema, we know that it has success and message. So let's, okay, so if it has success, we'll, we're going to expect that sometimes this will error out. So it would be a good idea to wrap this in a try catch block. That way we, we're able to return a error response. I'm going to wrap the remove trip as well. Assuming everything goes well, let's work on this return. It's going to have success equals to true. I'm going to add the return type just so I have better intelligence. So success is going to be true. We'll also have message. And this I'll just have a template string saying successfully add trips with IDs. And then we'll just stringify this so it'll be easier to see. And then finally have launches and we're going to return the IDs here. Down in remove trip we're going to do the same thing. And because the response expects launches to be an array. I'm just going to wrap that singular ID in one array. And the message here is going to be successfully remove trip with ID of ID. I think it'd be a good idea to make a private method here called create trip update error, where we could return a trip update response model where the success is always going to be false. And then we just send in the message and launches. This way we could check for other different types of errors besides just a database failure. But I can do create trip up the error here, and we'll just have a normal error here. And then for remove trips, I'm just gonna copy this actually. And we have to change this to only have one ID, and there we go. But this private method will come in handy if we're trying to check something else, like for example, if the ID already exists on the user, so add trip will be meaningless and as well as re if remove trip you're trying to remove something that you don't already have so those are errors that make sense so for remove trip that'll be that'll look like this so what we what's next oh right so in our resolver all we need to do now is call up both of these this is actually a number so in our book trips we'll do this dot user service dot add trips we do launch IDs for the first argument but we also need the email which reminds me we need to use guards here so that we have access to the user object which comes from context user and I'm just gonna restructure that here and then we can send it in also I remember that we need to actually get launch IDs from the arguments of launch IDs here. And then we're gonna follow the same steps for this mutation down here. This one takes the launch ID and email. And if we save, 
And make sure you return both of these. And then there's one last thing that we need to do, which is if you go back to our user models, this is currently a list of numbers. We actually want to transform this to launches. So what we need to do is generate a new resolver. I'm going to put it inside of launch and it's called the trip update response. And I'll also add options of no spec and flat. All right, it looks like it's been created. I don't know why I get all these errors. I think I might have to update node. But once you do that, you can open up your new resolver here. Now it doesn't actually matter which module this resolver goes into. I just put it into launch resolver because that just makes most sense in terms of the domain that it belongs to. But I do know that I want the launch service, which is available inside of the launch module. And all we really need to do is resolve another field. And this time it's called launches on the parents of trip. Trip update response model is the type that we are dealing with. And parent comes from GraphQL. And here we'll just return this dot launch service dot get launch by IDs of trip dot launches. And now our application is done. So the last thing that we need to do is just uh, give it a spin and test it out. So I'm going to run yarn start dev now and go into our browser and make sure you refresh so you get the playground. And right now we have a me query, which is null because we did not log in. This token is probably expired. So let's make a mutation to log in. And the email is going to be email.com. So there's our new token. Let's make sure you grab it and change this down here to the new token. And test that out with a me query. Now we can test out our new attribute of trips. And trips is a launch, so we can open this up and get some IDs as well as some other attributes. I'm gonna get site. And through some debugging, I already added a few. Right now I have like 1, 13, 2, 20. Just to get some stuff. But let's test out our mutation now. And let's go with. Okay, that was weird. Um, so I went with one and success was true. I was going to do 13, but if we do one again, uh, we should hit that error. And then if we do the me query, which I have in another tab, the one is no longer there. So if we now do the launch ID of 13, we should also remove that. So there's our new response. And in the me query, this 13 here should disappear as soon as I press the play button, which it does. Now let's also test out the book trips, which takes in a launch IDs and that gives us an array. Um, let's just add both 1 and 13 back to the user. And while we're at it, let's just add a random other number. So, I don't know, 99. If we execute, uh, this will come back. We have the three launches, and we also added successfully 1, 13, and 99. And in our me query, those are now added to the end of the list. So yeah, that's the application. And we're currently done. And I hope you guys enjoyed and found this video valuable. If you did, I will see you next time.